Good day, Great Tools. Welcome to this next lesson in Organic Molecules. In this lesson, we're going to learn about alkenes and alkynes. Ever wondered what's in a name? Well, in organic chemistry, the name of a molecule links it to a group of similar molecules, and it also tells us about the structure of the molecules. Remember in our previous lesson, we looked at the homologous series called the alkanes. These molecules all have single carbon to carbon bonds and their names end in A-N-E. Today, we'll look at examples of hydrocarbons that belong to two other homologous series, the alkenes and the alkynes. The names of all the molecules belonging to the alkenes end in E N E. These molecules also share a special structure. They all have one double bond between two carbon atoms. In the same way, the names of all the molecules belonging to the alkynes end in Y N E. And these molecules all have one triple bond between two carbon atoms. Before we investigate the alkenes and alkynes in detail, there are three special terms I want to introduce you to. These are functional group, saturated hydrocarbon, and unsaturated hydrocarbon. Let's begin with the first term, functional group. A functional group is the special feature or structure belonging to an organic molecule or a group of organic molecules. Can you identify the special feature of all the organic molecules that belong to the alkanes? Well, the alkanes are the simplest type of organic molecules. They are hydrocarbons because they contain only hydrogen and carbon. Their distinguishing characteristic or special feature is that they have single carbon bonds only. So we can say that the functional group in the alkanes is a single carbon to carbon bond. Now, the second term on our list is the term saturated hydrocarbon. A saturated hydrocarbon is a molecule in which every carbon atom is bonded to four different atoms. So the alkanes are all saturated hydrocarbon because they all have four single covalent bonds. These molecules are called saturated because each carbon in the molecule has the maximum number of atoms around it. Right. Now, what about the term unsaturated hydrocarbon? An unsaturated hydrocarbon is a molecule that has at least two carbon atoms, which have less than the maximum number of atoms joined to them. Look at ethane. Each carbon has four atoms around it. Each carbon has the maximum number of atoms around it. But notice, in ethene, there are only three atoms bonded to each carbon. And in ethine, there are only two atoms bonded to each carbon. In both these cases, the number of atoms around each carbon is less than the maximum number of four. So, an unsaturated hydrocarbon is a molecule in which there is at least one double or triple bond present between two carbon atoms. This means that molecules that belong to the alkenes or alkynes are unsaturated hydrocarbons. Can you identify the functional group present in alkenes and alkynes? Well, the special characteristic that makes ethene an unsaturated hydrocarbon is the single double bond. All alkenes have this same functional group. Now what about the alkynes? Notice in ethine, the first carbon is only bonded to a hydrogen atom at the other carbon atom. But here the functional group 
is a triple bond. The functional group gives us a way to identify the homologous group that a molecule belongs to. This means we will also have a way of naming the molecules belonging to that group. Today, we will focus on groups of molecules in which there is always at least one double or triple bond. We'll start with naming molecules belonging to the alkenes. Let's apply the IUPAC naming rules just as we did for the alkanes. We start naming any molecule by counting the carbon atoms in the longest chain. This gives us the first part of the name. This molecule has three carbon atoms. Remember, in the IUPAC naming system, one carbon uses the prefix meth, two carbons eth, three carbons prop. Now we look at the bonds. If the carbons were joined with single bonds, this would be propane. But because this has a double bond, it belongs to the alkenes. So this molecule is propene. Try to follow these two easy steps to name this compound. It should be easy. Just remember first to look at the number of carbons for the first part of the name, followed by the part of the name that tells us how the carbon atoms are bonded. I'm sure you could tell that four carbon atoms made the name start with bute, and the double bond means that the molecule's name ends in ene. Butene may sound similar to butane, but notice that butene has fewer hydrogen atoms than the butane. So, butene is an unsaturated hydrocarbon, but butane is a saturated hydrocarbon. In unsaturated molecules, we can break their double or triple bonds to attach more atoms. There is an easy test to see if a molecule has double or triple bonds. Let's go to the lab where Philip is ready to demonstrate this for us. Hi guys, I hope you're enjoying the lesson so far. Let's see if we can use some simple chemicals to tell if a molecule is saturated or unsaturated. Let's start off with the chemicals. Hexane and hexene. Can you tell from the names which one is saturated? We use bromine to test for an unsaturated compound like hexene. Bromine is a very dangerous chemical and can't be used alone. So first, we've added it to a solvent called carbon tetrachloride. We add the red-brown bromine mixture to the hexane first. Hmm. It seems that nothing happens to the color of bromine when it's added to the hexane. Let's try hexene and see what happens. Once again, we add the same number of drops of the bromine solution to the hexene. Let's check that. Wow, this is interesting. It seems that when we add bromine to unsaturated hexene, the bromine color quickly disappears. We have a useful test for unsaturated hydrocarbons, whether they are alkenes or other types of molecules. When bromine is mixed with an unsaturated compound, bromine's color quickly disappears. Now, I'm sure you've heard all about saturated fats and unsaturated fats. This tub of margarine says that it contains polyunsaturated compounds. These apparently help to keep your heart healthy. Here, I have margarine that I've heated and added to a solvent. Now let's add the bromine. Interesting. The color disappears again. So it would seem that this margarine contains unsaturated hydrocarbons. Let's go back to Amira and learn more about these unsaturated compounds. Let's summarize what we know about alkenes so far. They are hydrocarbons. They contain one double bond between two carbon atoms. They are unsaturated 
and they can be distinguished from alkanes by reacting them with bromine. However, there are many variations in the structure of alkenes. One of the main differences is where the functional group, the double bond, occurs in each molecule. When the molecules have long chains, the double bond can be in many places. This also means that the name of the molecule must tell us where to find the functional group. Let's take a look at a few examples to understand this problem better. When we look at these two molecules, we can clearly see that they are made of the same atoms. They both have four carbon atoms, so they must be butenes, but they have different structures. I'm sure you remember that molecules related to one another in this way are called isomers. Isomers must have different names. The only difference between these molecules is the position of the double bond. To identify the position of the double bond, we number the carbon atoms in the longest chain and start counting from the side closest to the double bond. Let's see. We number the carbon atoms from the left here. Can you see that the double bond is between carbon number one and carbon number two? We use the lowest number to indicate where the double bond is and say that this molecule is but1-ene. The only new rule to remember is that numbers are separated from words by using a dash. Let's see if you can do it. The next molecule is the isomer we saw earlier. Try to name this molecule on your own. Can you see that the double bond is between the second and third carbon? That means that this is but2-ene. There's quite a lot to remember when naming alkenes. Let's revise. First, we count the number of carbon atoms giving us the prefix or first part of the name. Then, if we see that the double bond can be on more than one place, we number the carbon's atoms, starting at the side closest to the double bond. Then we put it all together with the lowest number of the carbon atom on which the double bond occurs in the middle of the name. Now that we know how to name alkenes and test for unsaturated compounds, Let's take a look at the alkynes. Fortunately, the same rules can be used to name alkynes, except that the letters Y, N, E form the end of the name. Let's look at an example and see if you can name it. Here is a molecular structure similar to our previous example. Four carbon atoms in the longest chain gives us the prefix but again we see that there is a triple bond telling us that this is an alkyne. In isomers of butyne, the triple bond can be in more than one place, so we must number the carbon atoms, again from the side closest to the functional group. Can you complete the rest of the naming process? Yes. Excellent. The name of this compound is but1-ine. Did you know that alkenes and alkynes are used in everyday life? The margarine we saw earlier was made from plant fats, which are made up of alkenes. The short alkenes, ethene and propene, are used to make many of the plastics we use in everyday life. Ethene can even be used to artificially ripen fruit, such as bananas. This chemical acts as a message to the bananas so that they know when to change into ripe fruit. Even if you place ripening bananas around other fruit, in most cases they will ripen more quickly. Ethine is sometimes referred to by its old name, acetylene.
It is mixed with oxygen in a special burner called a blowtorch. When ethane burns in oxygen, it can make temperatures hot enough to melt steel. Now that we've seen how to name and use alkenes and alkynes, let's take a look at some examples that are more complex. Some hydrocarbons contain more than one double or triple bond. To show this, we place the words di or tri in the name to show that there are two or three of these functional groups. Let me show you what I mean. This molecule has two double bonds and we must name it so that the name matches what we see in the structure. It has five carbon atoms making the prefix pent. If we number the carbon atoms with the lowest number carbon closest to the first double bond, this makes the double bond on the first and third carbon atoms. Because there are two double bonds, this is a diene. Putting it all together, the name is penta-1-3-diene. Notice how we had to place the letter A after pent to separate the sounds. This is always the case when naming a diene or triene. Well, by now you should be able to name any of the alkanes, alkenes or alkynes.